blessed. Take your healing. Take your breakthrough. Heal in my healing. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven? Everybody lift up your two hands to heaven and give God thanks for his manifold grace over your life since this month began. Give him thanks and praise. Celebrate him from the depth of your heart. There is no one like Jesus. Rebo Lagalo Taseli Alitano. Has God been good to you? Give him thanks. Have you seen his goodness in your life? Give him thanks. Would you ask him right now to speak to you today? I want to hear what the Lord will speak to me. The Lord will speak peace. He speaks peace to his people. He speaks peace to his people. Now speak to me today, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. He said, the way of peace they know not. They have made crooked paths for their feet. Those who walk there and they shall not know peace. Isaiah 58 and verse 59, verse 8. Lord, show me the way to lifelong settlement. The way of peace. So there's a way to peace. They know not. They have tried to create shortcuts for themselves. Those who walk there and they shall not know peace. Lord, Unveil to me the way to lifelong settlement. Show me the way of peace today. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Show me the way of peace today. Lekotania Rusaga Galabarutane. Show me the way of peace today. La predo te crede saluda. Embropolage calaro tazezo. Show me the way of peace today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. On this covenant day of settlement, every unsettled area of anyone's life shall be finally, supernaturally settled today. Ups and downs must come to an end in your life today. No more on and off in your spiritual life. No more ups and downs in your careers. No more down, up, and out in your business anymore. Yeah. 
your hour of settlement has finally come. Every unsettled aspect of your destiny is declared settled today. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' precious name. It's my new dawn era. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please be seated. Remember the prophetic focus for the month is obedience, gateway to realms of noiseless breakthrough. God is wiping away your tears and turning them to testimonies. And our teaching series for the month, we are on part four today, the last one of it on Sundays. Every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. So our noiseless breakthrough inches on a positive response to every commandment of scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrines, for reproofs, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, and prepared unto every good work. So, as we embrace the commandment of scriptures, we are thoroughly decorated, we are supernaturally decorated, and we are empowered to impact on our world through good works. But obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any biblical truth. Prove me now, he said concerning tithing. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there will be not enough room to contain them. Until you obey every revealed truth, you cannot prove its validity. For instance, if you are willing to repent, you cannot be saved. No matter how hard you pray, the instruction is, Repent and you shall be saved. If you are not willing to repent and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you cannot be saved. For instance, you cannot be healed without faith. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yeah, okay, according to your faith. So our healing is released according to our faith. Obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any scriptural truth. You can't prove it by quoting it. You prove it by obeying it. You can imagine that the people at the kind of Galilee, all that they did was to quote what Jesus said, pour water into the water pot, and won't do it. <laughs> Would there be wine? No. You can imagine the blind man saying, Jesus said, go to Siloam and wash. Jesus said, go to Siloam and wash. I had them by myself. He said, go to Siloam and wash. I wouldn't go there. Will you receive his sight? No, Obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any truth. Every truth of scriptures will only become a proof with your obedience. That's so important. Therefore, doing whatever the word commands is what Commit God to confirm his word in our life. Doing whatever the word commands. Doing whatever the word commands. And passing the test of obedience is what qualifies believers for change of levels. Re listen to this. 
God said to Abraham, get out of your country, into a, a land that I will show you, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and he that blesses you, I will bless. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Great. So Abraham was released as a blessing to his war. Now, but in Genesis 22, he changed his level. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, the two situations responded to his obedience. God responded to Abraham's disobedience, I mean obedience, and changed his level. So every act of obedience changes the believer's level. Every act of obedience. Don't ever get tired obeying God. Every act of obedience changes the levels of believers. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12, 3. Now, Genesis 22, verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Get out of the country and so Abraham departed. And so he became a blessing. Now, sacrifice your only son. Abraham went ahead. And then God changed his level. Now, the Lord said to Peter, push your boat a little into the water. And Peter obeyed. And now, at the end, henceforth, you shall become a fisher of men. So from fisher of fishes, he changed his level to fisher of men. Luke chapter 5 and verse 4 to 10. So every act of obedience changes our level. Every what? Every act of obedience changes our level. Now, God said to me, arise, get down to Kaduna. So we arose and got in there and God showed us favor. Now, again, arise, get down to Lagos, which he knows you hate it. Get down to Lagos. You, I know you hate Lagos, but get down there. Now, after we saw the grace of God, another level. Now, move into the forest so you can die there. Amen. Every act of obedience changes the believer's level. Enjoy obeying God. You obey what he says now, he changes your level. Next. And then you obey what he says next, then he changes your level again. Every act of obedience. And until we got to the bush, we could not impact the wall. Now we go to the forest before the wall took notice of what Jesus is doing in this ministry. We just turned global from where we should die by the act of obedience. Most believers are victims of their disobedience. Nonchalant attitude. Okay, I'll do it anytime. Someone shared with me many years ago that God called them into ministry. I said, God doesn't do that. He said, look, Abraham, your father, I called him alone. He said, no, we are all in a Greek. You know, one is great, one is this. I said, I said can I tell you this? Anything outside the truth has no future. The way they fought to separate, it was like war. Like Syrian war. Somebody told me sometimes that um, God has given them a job to do outside the country and he sent his wife there. I said, you will pay a great price for it. You will pay a great price for it. The apostles were leading their wives about. Now, where, where you go to your Bible from, I don't know. The ministry virtually ended there. Truth, the truth. Obedience is what makes it work. Obedience is what, if you, ask, if you claim to be smarter than scriptures, you have lost your future. If you ever pretend to be smarter than scriptures, you have lost your future. So enjoy obeying God, that is where your future lies. Enjoy obeying God, that's what secures your future. Enjoy obeying God. We can as well stop here today. I've seen every act of obedience in my life advance my life. I've seen it push my life forward. And many have seen that here. You are the next in line. Now, we're looking at this morning the commandment of love. 
which is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God <laughs> with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. <laughs> the second is like unto it, is an overflow from it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, he calls it the first and great commandment. Why? It is a command, commandment that controls the effect of all other commandments. It is one commandment that controls the effect of all other commandments. For instance, every destiny in the kingdom is defined by faith. It is to you according to your faith. But faith works by love. Our prosperous destiny answers to giving. But giving works by love. For though I part with all my goods to feed the poor and have no charity, it profits me nothing. Revelation is what changes our position from one level to another. Amen. But I have all knowledge and understand all mysteries and have no charity, I am nothing. Yes. I am nothing. So revelation works by law. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, but knowledge will be barren without law. Your, the revelation you have will deliver to the level of your law for God. Amen. So, works by God. Think of it. You can't assess any more revelation than your depth of love for God. John 15, 15. I have not called you servants, but friends, because all I have heard of my Father have made known to you. So when you become God's friend, you have unlimited access to the secrets of God. Amen. So that's what makes it the first and great commandment. Everything works to the level of our love for God. Everything. That's why you can quote many scriptures forever and it doesn't deliver. It doesn't deliver. It's the first and great commandment. It doesn't deliver. Prayer demands that you forgive if God must forgive you. And if God does not forgive you, you will never be forgiven. So prayer will never be answered. So think of it. Nothing works without law. That's why he said, charity never faileth. It is the failure-proof commandment. It is what? First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. Charity. I'm not talking, I love you, you love me. I'm talking about your love for God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. I'm not talking about thou shalt love thy wife. That's a different one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, you can't love him and not love his word. You know what David the lover said? How love I thy Lord. It's my meditation on my, all the day long. When you stop being guided by the word, you're on your way. You are getting lost. <laughs> you just love God and you love his word unshakably. You love his word unreservedly. My life is ruled by the world. Ruled by the world. Ruled. Ruled. Is it in the world? That's what to do. Is it not in the world? Forget it. When you come to that level, you walk in dominion without sweat. You walk what? You walk in dominion without sweat. You are in command of the affairs of your life under God. You are actively in partnership with Jesus in determining the direction of your life by just embracing his word as the final authority over every issue of your life. Can I hear your amen? amen. That's the first and the great commandment. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Bajuna, lovest thou me more than these? He said, Lord, you know I love you. Now, prove it. Go after my lamb. 
John 21, 15 to 17. He said again, Simon, son of Jonah, do you really love me? He said, I love you, Jesus. He said, go after my sheep. Do you love me? I love you, Jesus. Go after my sheep. Go and prove the sincerity of your love by loving what I love most. Amen. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That was our belief in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. That is God's greatest love on the earth, the salvation of the souls of men. Do you really love me? Go and prove it by loving what I love most. Don't sit down in church religiously, waiting all the day for bread and butter. Go and do what I ask you to do. And watch what I do with your life. Today is your day of settlement. Yes. Can I tell you this? And I'm telling you the truth in Christ. Jesus settled me 42 years ago. I'm one of the most restful people on this earth today. When I hear a noise, I say, what's that? I am solidly in covenant with Jesus. I'm making my boast in the Lord, and I, I mean it. In the same vein, because it was one day, in the same vein, my God will say to you supernaturally today. So, the love of God is not in words or in tongues, but in truth and in deed. It is manifested by the things you do as commanded by God. First John chapter 3 and verse 18 is practically demonstrated by our response to his commandment. You know what he said? Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it, John 14, 21, is he that loveth me? He that loves me will love my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. God never stops manifesting himself to his lovers. He shows up on their behalf on every issue of life. God just stands with them, goes with them, walks with them, walks with them all the time. Because the are in love with them. They are just in love with them. And so they enjoy its manifestations over and again. You know what the Bible said? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. That's the entire heart of any man. What God has prepared or reserved for them that love him. Amen. Every true lover ends up a living wonder. Every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. If you are a genuine lover, you are on your way to becoming a living wonder. People, eh? Eh? God is great, too. Oh. What? Ah, we were living here together before. Eh? What has happened? What has taken place? Oh, my God. Ah, God is great. Now, that is the kind of exclamation the world will be making in your direction. <laughs> Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. So the commandment of love is the greatest of all commandments. It determines the effect of every other commandment. Also from scripture, we discover that love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13, 8 and 10. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, when the law is fulfilled, supernatural blessings continue to flow. Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 to 13. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord my, your God and observe to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord your God will set thee on high. What? Above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. 
Now, he listed all of that to verse 13. Amazing catalog of blessings covering all areas of life. Amen. Amen. All deliverable by fulfilling the law. And love is the fulfilling of the law. So when you are truly in love, supernatural blessings continue to flow in all areas of your life. Supernatural blessings continue to flow in all areas of your life. Pouring out like torrents of rain. And love is the fulfilling of the law that brings you and I into the supernatural blessings of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 to 13. Love is, you know, the, the hotter your love for God, the greater command you have of these blessings. Amen. They just come to thee and overtake thee. You are not pursuing them. 